How's it going everybody, it's Stas here, and in this video we're going to be talking about and breaking down the top couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade right now, heading into the second week of December here in 2019. I also want to go over natural gas as it saw a ridiculous dump, 5% dump when the futures markets opened, as well as kind of recap what the stock market did last week in terms of the S&P so we can refresh ourselves going into this upcoming week and of course we'll look at the futures very briefly to see what those are looking like so we can determine whether or not we're going to have a green day tomorrow or a red day based on what they're looking like so all I ask from you is if you enjoy the video hit that like button consider subscribing if you want to see further content for me and if you want to be further connected with the strive smart community the discord group chats linked down below as well as that Facebook group so guys this is what we're looking at here for the S&P 500. It ended up closing up green $28 on Friday, up 0.91%. And you guys can see here on the five-day, five-minute chart, last week was kind of a roller coaster. We dumped on Monday, we dumped on Tuesday, so two pretty large red days there. Then ultimately, we rallied back on Wednesday. We saw that nice gap up consolidation, kind of consolidated again on Tuesday, or rather on Thursday day before gapping up very aggressively and again closing up 28 bucks here on Friday. So kind of a seesaw day for the S&P and honestly all of the overall markets, the NASDAQ and the Dow Jones, but nonetheless very, very strong close to the week. And on the hourly chart, we can see now we're trending above moving averages, both the 50 and the 180 SMA and the EMA. So this is a very good sign that the S&P is back in an uptrend, right? Or rather Rather continuing the uptrend. The uptrend never really broke. And uh, yeah, now we're looking like we could potentially hit that all time high maybe this week, which is at around 31.54. And based on the four hour chart, guys, like I mentioned in Friday's video, there still seems like there is some gas left in the tank on the SP simply based here on um, the RSI, right? The RSI, it's not extremely overbought, which would be anything above 70. It's obviously obviously not oversold, which would be anything close to 30 and obviously below that. It's kind of here at about 60, which if we ran up again, hitting that all time high, that would bring us to the overbought status. And from there, based on the RSI strictly, we would potentially see a pull down. So what are the futures looking like right now, guys? Let's break down the ES. The ES, which is the E-mini S&P 500 futures, these are currently down $4.75 here, down 0.15%. So they did not gap up green, which tells me that we may be seeing a pull down. Hey, we may be seeing a pull down down to that EMA, maybe down to that 50 SMA. And if this holds into tomorrow's session, right, the S&P is probably going to gap down a bit um, before hitting that all-time high, like I said said at around 31.54. So we'll probably gap down, uh, or rather sell off to maybe that EMA line, maybe 31.35 at the lowest, maybe 31.40. And from there, based on, you know, if we hold that, we could potentially run back up and hit that all-time high, right? The NASDAQ right now, down 12 points, down 0.15%. Just like the S&P, guys, we're seeing a bit of a retracement after that very strong day that we had this past Friday. That makes sense. We're just cooling off a bit. The uptrend is not breaking just because we're pulling down, right? It's simply a cool off period. So I'd look to see, do we hold this 50 SMA? Do we hold this EMA, this green and this light blue line here? These could be levels that we hold before we continue the uptrend maybe this week, right? The Dow Jones right now down about 34 points down 0.12% here, just like the S&P, just like the NASDAQ. It's simply selling off a little bit. It's retracing. It's seeing um, a bit of a pullback, right? So that's kind of what the futures are looking like. And if this does transfer into tomorrow's session, that could indicate a potential red day um, tomorrow. Who knows, guys, especially if they do gap down even further. Let's say the ES is down, let's say 10 points tomorrow morning, maybe 12. That 
that can indicate a further sell-off tomorrow. But let's say on the flip side, this red doesn't hold. Let's say we simply pull down overnight. Let's say this happens, the move happens overnight in terms of that pull down. Then we start to fly back up. Let's say tomorrow more, uh, morning pre-market hours. That could be a sign that we're turning green heading into the session on Monday. So those are just a couple of things that I'm watching here in terms of the markets. And I'd love to know what you guys have to think about that down below there in the comment section. Don't be shy. Let me know what your thoughts are on that. So let's get into it in terms of individual stocks, ETFs, ETNs that I'm watching. And of course, we're going to start off here with natural gas guys slash ngf 20 so let's pull that up that is the natural gas um january's futures contract and now they are getting crushed guys like we mentioned um you know earlier in this video and like you guys saw in the title these were down five percent they gapped down i think as low as six percent which is insanity guys they're down 10 cents right now down 4.67 percent and if we go to that one day one minute chart you can see we gapped down all the way to 215 and since that point we came back to 220 and now we're slowly starting to fill that gap up to about maybe that 180 SMA, which would be at around 227, right? Maybe above that, which let's not get ahead of ourselves, guys. We saw the massive dump. We have to see what it does from here. Again, maybe 224, 225 before we do end up, if we end up getting back up to the 235 level. So now that we saw this massive gap down, what are we going to expect tomorrow in D gas and U gas? Well, it's a very simple answer to that question, guys. There's a very simple answer to that. DGAS is going to be up at least 10 to 12 percent in the morning if this does end up holding. And let me show you guys what that could end up looking like. So here we are at 155, natural gas down about 5 percent, right? So that means um, DGAS will be up three times 5 percent, so maybe around 15 percent, right? At the highest point, if this holds, that's where DGAS will end up opening. So expect maybe an open in the 180s to the 185s, which is incredible. If you were to hold this thing over the weekend, which I'm sure somebody, at least one person watching this video, did hold DGAS over the weekend. If you did, let me know down below in the comments. But if you did, you'd be up again around 14-15% if natural gas was to hold this gap down that it's holding right now. And of course, you guys on the flip side, it's not going to be too pretty, right? It's not going to be too pretty. It's going to be down that 14, 15%. And we may be breaking into the sevens, guys. Believe it or not, tomorrow morning, we may be breaking into the sevens, which is pretty insane considering a couple of days ago, literally, um, we were at about $15 per share. And this really goes to my point. It really re reiterates my point of never holding these leveraged ETNs overnight and especially over the weekend because these are not meant to be held, guys. These are not meant to be long-term investments. Literally, go to the prospectus. You can read it. It's supposed to be uh, a, 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 you know, an ETN. It's supposed to be a tool that you can day trade with. It's supposed to be for that you know volatility throughout the day for day traders, very advanced day traders to come in and capitalize. That's kind of what these are meant for in terms of you guys and DGAS. And literally when people ask me, guys, should I hold this long term? It's it's just not the, the, the goal of these. And really, you should do more research into that before even asking whether or not you should hold this long term because you'd get really um you know crushed if you were to hold something like this, you know, that's completely downtrending over the four hour um you know chart and over the 180 day time frame that you're seeing here, right? So in terms of what I'm looking at, um, I'm honestly looking at a potential rebound play on you guys. I think that's possible, right? If you guys recall last time natural gas did this, slash NG50 or 20 rather. It did this, might, it might have been last week. No joke, guys. It might have been last week. We saw that aggressive sell-off. Very aggressive. We got extremely oversold and from there, we were able to play you guys on that recovery, right? Because everything that gets crushed, everything that gets crushed, it's going to recover back up and we called it last time it dumped down, right? So now that it dumped down again, it's getting oversold yet again. I'm looking to 
to play something very similar, right? If we end up holding this little recovery trend that we're seeing right now, as you guys can see, right, we're slowly starting to fill that gap that we just opened up. You know, if we continue this up tomorrow, maybe to 228, 229, who knows? This could be a you guys play for tomorrow before ultimately testing this level again and either breaking out, which would be bullish, or continuing the downtrend. And with the fundamentals being the way they are, guys, you know, a lot of production compared to last year. The weather in terms of natural gas here, again, a lot of production. The weather right now is mild, right? It's not as cold, so demand is not as crazy as it was last year. You know, with these fundamental factors, that's leading me to believe that there could be some more downside here, at least in the short term, for natural gas, like I've been saying over the past couple of weeks, guys. Literally, I've been saying this, um, and I know you guys can attest to that if you've been following these videos. So, that's kind of what I'm looking for, guys. Potential bounce back on you guys. But ultimately, in the short term here, as long as we're having this mild weather, I think there's going to be more downside in natural gas. Um, and yeah, that's kind of how we have to play it here in my personal um, opinion, right? And again, do your research. Don't get stuck holding these. That is very, very dangerous. I've been burned before. Trust me. This is from personal experience here. I've been crushed holding these in the past. That's how I know, and that's why I'm telling telling you guys, um, especially if you have not held these for a long time, save yourself the money. Don't do it. So let's talk about some other stocks here. Ticker symbol NVDA is one. Um, we pulled down nicely 220 down to this 180 SMA. We're holding this higher low and this is doing uh, pretty well really because the markets have been recovering, right? So this seems like it's really because the markets have been recovering that NVIDIA is also recovering. And you'll notice that once you do research at, you know, through a bunch of different stocks, you look at a bunch of different stocks, you'll notice how some stocks don't really go with the market. Market does well, you know, a, a, a certain stock could go down, right? Market does poorly, a certain stock could go up. A lot of the time, you know, Tesla stock was one of those stocks, right? The markets were getting crushed last year. I'm sure a lot of you guys remember, you know, Tesla stock was going up during that time, which was pretty crazy, right? So that's something to consider here that in Nvidia and a bunch of other stocks too, right? They're going up now because the market has been rallying up. So if this market does not turn green tomorrow, let's say we sell off aggressively, like I mentioned earlier on in this video, if that scenario ends up playing out, there's a good likelihood that Nvidia ends up taking this hit. It gets rejected by that 50 SMA and I'll probably won't trade it at that point. But hopefully if these markets turn around, in this week, you know, I think NVIDIA could be a potential play, um, especially if we break that 50 SMA and end up going back to about 220, which like I've mentioned before in previous um, videos, you know, that's a nice 3-4% uh, potential for profit on NVIDIA on this dip. So I'm watching that one. Netflix is a similar stock, and you'll notice a bunch of these stocks are similar. They've all come from dips, or they've all dipped over the past couple of days because, again, the markets have dipped. So Netflix has gone down from 316 down to about 300 bucks. We're holding that higher low, beautiful uptrend being held here and that 180 SMA. Now I'm looking to see whether or not we break that 50 SMA to potentially fill the gap up again to about 316 bucks where we got rejected a couple of days ago. And I'll, I think that's possible. So I'm going to set an alert at $310 here. Mark is at or above $310. We'll create that right there. So if we break that, guys, that's going to be a nice 2-3% fill. And like I've been talking about on these videos, you know, anything above $315 on Netflix could be a breakout to about $340, bucks, guys, because you can see we sold off aggressively down from $380 down to about $308, opening up that massive gap, which is, you know, part 
part of the gap that could be filled from again 316 up to 340 which is around a six to seven percent margin of profit so netflix that's what i'm watching right there at v ticker symbol atvi this is another one that's on the brink of a breakout if we break above 56 bucks here guys on the one year one day you can see that from 55 or 56 rather up to 62 which is the next resistance that's around a 10 to 11 percent margin of profit which is crazy right a lot of these video game stocks have been crushed now they're finally recovering right you have um, EA Sports uh, what's the other one TTWO you know these stocks have been crushed take two this one actually recovered quite nicely at V is not actually really you know it's not at that huge recovery point quite yet like take two and EA it's really not there either right this one's slowly recovering as well so video game stocks I'm liking EA right now I'm liking ATVI as potential comeback plays here. And some other ones that I have on this list here are the payment stocks. I like the payment stocks here as well. PayPal being one, like I've mentioned over the past couple of weeks, and especially since it's taken a hit ever since it acquired that uh, Honey Company, um, Honey H O N E Y, um, not not H U N. Um, anyway, that's that's a different ticker. But from 108 down to about 104 dollars, you can see ever since they acquired uh, Honey, you know that's about a three four sell off there and on the four hour chart seems like we're holding that 180 SMA at a higher low right so the trends holding we have that margin of profit open now all I'm looking for is that breakout kind of uh, you know of this little wedge that we're seeing here I guess you can say it's kind of a weird little pattern you know it could be a, an ascending triangle as well if we break that that could be a trigger to buy here on PayPal I'm liking MasterCard as well um MA. This one doesn't have a uh, you know the most margin of profit, but I think if we break 295, this thing could potentially break out even higher. Maybe hit an all-time high at 300 bucks. And Visa, uh, Visa's another payment stock I like. Um, 182 doesn't have a lot of margin up to 187, but still about two three percent. That is definitely worth watching. So another one that I want to talk about is Chipotle Mexican Grill, ticker symbol CMG. This is one that I swing traded a couple of days ago, or rather two weeks ago, actually, from about this level up to about 816. Now I'm looking to re-enter as the trend is still pushing up. So I kind of want to ride this trend, especially if we break 830, because from 830, guys, we've seen that break multiple times, and mostly every time that we've seen that break, we filled up to 860 bucks, which is around a 2 to 3% profit potential for Chipotle Mexican Grill. So before we get into the second stock, guys, I want to let you all know very quickly, linked down below, there's a Webull link where if you click that link and sign up, you actually get two free stocks valued up to $1,400 once you deposit $100 into the account. So if you want free stocks, if you want some free money, hey, Go use that link. That's linked down below. Now let's talk about the next stock, which is going to be Tesla, guys, I believe. Ticker symbol TSLA. Let's take a look at that. So from 360 down to about 330, that's where we pulled down. Um, you know, pretty much after that Cybertruck release, an, uh, about an 8 to 9% profit margin was open. So I, I think personally, guys, Tesla has a, a shot to get back to $360 per share, especially if we break 340 this upcoming week. We're already teasing with that 50 SMA here, breaking above it. We kind of already did, right? We closed above that and the EMA, but I'd like to see a further push up into 340 bucks, and this is where I'm looking to add um, more money to my existing swing position on Tesla. But let's say that doesn't happen. Let's say we end up dumping. I'd probably cut my losses if we break 328 um, and especially I'd be out of the position completely if we were to break 320 bucks and I honestly think that if we break this 180 SMA there could be a bigger gap down on Tesla but I'm not bearish right now guys I don't really think that's going to happen you know I got a comment the other day um, that you know people think I'm crazy that I'm holding uh, Tesla shares right here and the truth is I don't really think um, it's such a crazy thing guys because we 
we've had a lot of good news, a lot of catalysts here that are pushing Tesla stock up. I'm looking to ride the momentum. And sure, there are risks swinging Tesla stock, which is why any smart trader will use a stop loss, right? Or a mental stop loss and cut when it hits 2-3% in the red, right? So I'm not crazy, I think, because I'm managing my risk, right? I'm not in with a lot of money right now. I'm looking to add more money, like I've mentioned, um, when we break above 340. And let's say it doesn't go my way, which could happen, right? Who knows? I'm not the best trader in the world. I don't get everything right. Nobody does, right? I'll just simply cut my losses. It's not a big deal um, whatsoever there on Tesla, ticker symbol TSLA. So another one that I want to talk about here is Roku. Then we'll end off the video with gold here, guys. So Roku's in an interesting spot here. We could potentially be forming a head and shoulder here, which could be a, a, an interesting um, move for someone looking to short the stock. And that would happen if we were to break and kind of dump below this 140 support and this 180 SMA support here on the four hour chart. So let's say we were to sell off to 120 bucks. 130, you know, maybe all the way down to 110. That would obviously be the completion of that right shoulder, right, on this little head and shoulder that's forming. And that's kind of what the bears want in this situation, right? But if you're a bull, you want it to hold 140. Obviously, you want it to hold that 180 SMA at a higher low, and you want it to break that 50 SMA. So if I'm looking to go long here, guys, um, I'm definitely looking to enter at 150 as we pop above that 180 SMA initially, then maybe add more money once we break that 50 SMA at about 155. That's kind of what I would do um, if I was looking to go long on Roku. And I definitely see it returning back up here, honestly, guys, especially if we see a huge momentum push. We've seen it in the past where Roku just absolutely crushes it for days and days and days in a row. And that could definitely happen here yet again, especially on this pullback. I think whenever Roku pulls back, it's definitely worth watching. So gold is another one that I'm always watching, right? We can see that it's clearly downtrending. We didn't break out of that 180 SMA, mostly because the markets did quite well. So if these markets continue to go up, expect gold to sell off a little bit more, to be a bit more weak. But if we end up popping here, guys, if these markets end up getting rocky, which could definitely happen here leading up to that December 15th date, which I should have mentioned in the beginning of the video, but that's huge. The trade war tensions right now between the U.S say and China if Trump pushes back these tariffs that are scheduled on the 15th that could be a good catalyst for the markets right if these tariffs go into effect we get some rockiness in trade that's going to be very bad for the markets in my opinion right and that's where gold will come into play guys this is huge if we get the tariffs in more rockiness again that's where I'd see gold popping above that 180 SMA breaking out right and we'll see a good move in JNUG at that point point which goes up whenever GDX goes up which is really just an ETF that tracks gold right so JNUG I'm watching this one um, for that potential breakout on gold and it's always good to watch gold, guys. Watch gold. Watch it, especially when the markets are at all-time highs. You can hedge with gold if you believe in that strategy, right? And one way that I hedge in my M1 Finance portfolio, which is also linked down below, is by investing in GLD, which is simply a gold trust ETF. So that's kind of it. And obviously, I'm watching the market ETFs as well this week. If the markets get rocky, you know, SPXS, shorting the S&P, that could be something I do, you know, SQQQ shorting the NASDAQ, that could be something I do as well. So these are some that I'm watching and TVIX for volatility and uh, UVXY for volatility as well. And also one more thing about you guys I forgot to mention, we may get a reverse split here, guys. We may get a reverse split, kind of like what happened to TVIX a couple of days ago, right? You guys remember TVIX was like five, six bucks. Now it's 63 bucks. That's because it did... Um, um, a 10x reverse split, right? So that could end up happening to you guys if it does get to a lower price. And of course, I'll monitor that for you guys 
on the channel and let you guys know. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, and consider subscribing if you want to see further content for me. And again, if you want free money, if you want two free stocks, that Webull link is down below. Hit that link, simply put in 100 bucks, and you'll get two free stocks valued up to 1400 bucks. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Oh, and the Strive Smart Discord, Facebook, that's linked down below as well. Hope you all did great. Hope you all kill it in the markets tomorrow. Peace out.